uh, doing something a little bit different today and that I'm going to start the stream just sort of at random. I'm going to go ahead and announce it now, but uh, then just continue directly into what we were doing from uh, last time. Uh, and I'm not going to wait for anyone to show up because no one's going to show up anyway. And um, and even if they did, they can catch up in the middle. Not that anyone will show up. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and uh, announce my stream, which you can't see me doing, so it's not really useful for you, and probably a bad idea on my part. But then again, um, I can't really talk and do anything else. I can't even talk and think at the same time. Uh, but nonetheless, let's see if we can. Uh, so blah 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 blah. So just look at that wonderful nothingness while we're you know, the wonderful Walt of Oz. And look at the wonderful uh, code there while I uh, say now live. Okay, that sounds pretty exciting. I'd watch it. Except I can't because I'm doing it. But if I, if I weren't doing it, I'd watch it. I, actually, I probably wouldn't. So there is the... Um, there is... Uh, Oh, I think someone actually here. Oh. Um, maybe not. Okay. So let's see. Announce it on two servers, and there's three servers I'm allowed to announce it on uh, before someone kills me. Um, one of them is this one. The other one's oh, and the other third one's going to be OSM, I think. So, again, you can't see what I'm doing. So I, I know you can't. <coughs> Um, let's see. And let's just annoy the crap out of people again, and there we go. All right, let's see if anyone's in the stream chat. Uh, no, except for Lurks, who I've learned is not a real user, but uh, something else. We don't know what it is. All right, let's remember what we did yesterday. Yesterday, um, in addition to the stuff we'd done before with the, um, with the little box guy, we'd added um, automatic uh, fake tiles that tell, told us about the tile, at uh, and so if we do anything they should just show up there they are uh, they're at fairly low opacity but we had a problem when we move the screen around they appear to get darker but what's actually happening is um, they're I'm not undrawing I'm not removing the original drawings and so we're just basically overlapping everything so the more you do this uh, the uh, darker it becomes and eventually of course the the OSM map behind it uh, it become fades out and becomes hard to see even though the opacity is actually pretty small, um, once it gets, once you do it more than once, it, you're basically writing several image overlays of a low opacity becoming a high opacity. So we need to fix that, and that's going to be the first order of business today. Um, so let's see, and I think that's going to come from the function. Well, there's there's a couple of ways to do this, and we'll do it the wrong way, but we will put in a little. Um, We'll put in a little note saying, do this better. What we can actually do is, when we update the view, we can move all of the overlays from the map, and then the rest of the if over the update view function will put them back. And I'm hoping that'll work also for the OSM um, tiles, because we don't actually put them in explicitly. We, um, um, we let Leaflet and its tile map sort of handle that. Um, so let's go ahead and... Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, do this the wrong way, and we might we might end up doing it the right way later. Uh, but let me see if I can. F the wrong way is basically going to be to get a list of all of the overlays and remove them, and that's probably bad because we actually don't want to keep the overlays around. Uh, we want to destroy the objects. We don't necessarily want to keep them around and just have them removed. So that's two ways in which is this is going to be bad. Um, but let's see. Uh, I think it's list overlays, but I'm I'm cheating and looking at something I've written earlier. Um, let's see. Let's see. And once again, I might have to go. There we are. Yep, here it is. Wow, I actually found it pretty quickly. Um, so I'm impressed. And let me go ahead and cut and paste this sucker in. Okay, and I'll explain this in just a sec. Okay, so map each layer uh, lists the layers. And then... 
Well, actually, I'm sorry. Map each layer lets us supply a function uh, to each layer on the map. So map each layer will let us take each layer and apply the function to it. The function we're applying is we take the layer as the input and we say layer remove. Um, so this will remove all the layers. It's it's a bit of a hack. So let's put this um, make this more efficient. And we're going to list the two ways: uh, destroy unused layers, uh, only delete overlays as necessary. So we don't have to delete everything like we're doing here. All right, let's see if this works. We're going to go over here. Um, let's move over here. See what happens. And okay, so let's see. Go over here. So good. Uh, the uh, the tiles here that are um, the tiles here that are being drawn by the uh, my program are actually you know disappearing and reappearing nicely, but the OpenStreetMap is not. So that's kind of a problem for us. All right, so let's go ahead and do this a little bit better here. Um, yeah, so let's comment out this line. Let's go back into the uh, the program where we defined this, which is uh, I created bcmaps.js to do this place fake tiles on map. What we can do here is, um, and this is probably seriously ugly. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we can keep track of which tiles we've um, added to the uh, to the map, and then remove them on the next iteration before we add the new ones. So. Over here, uh, image overlay. This creates a new image overlay. It actually returns. Uh, it, it returns an image overlay. We don't really care because we're not um, we're not using it for anything. So what we do with it is we just add it to the map here, like this. But we can actually intercept this and say um, let overlay equals uh, all of this before the uh, uh, the add to map. So let's do this. Okay, and maybe we'll even look at it. Um, and then of course overlay dot add to object map. So this shouldn't change any of the way the code works, but it allows us to now access the overlay separately to do things with it, such as for example, um, mark it for deletion next time. Let's see if this has re unbroken stuff. Yes, that's a word. So there we are, and now again we're getting multiple layers, which is fine because we haven't done anything to fix it. But the OpenStreetMap is working fine. It's not the OSM is not disappearing, which is the whole point of doing this uh, this way. So um, so now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now I'm going to be a little bit careful here. Um, I don't want to use a global variable, but I think I'm going to have to. I don't actually have to. I could just use uh, a field in the object that we're passed and that the object that we change because it is a pass by reference. Um, the problem with that is the very first time object, we need to set it to be an array because it's going to be an array of image overlays. Um, the very first time we get it, it's probably not going to be an object and um, that's going to be ugly. So. I'm trying to think what, if there's something we can return from here. We don't. This actually doesn't return anything because it just puts the tiles on the map and it's done with it. Um, what this could do, though, oh yeah, okay, this is this is actually a good way of doing it. We will uh, return the list of overlays we've added. So that's actually a very nice thing to do. So and that's going to be one of the return values. Um, and since we didn't have returns until now. Um, uh, let's see. Overlays, array of overlays. Okay. Very nice. And by the way, if we're going to do that, I'm tempted to actually make these object.z, object.nsew. I won't do that right now, but we could, in fact, make all of these things that are part of the object. So when we return the object, um, people can see what's, uh, people can see a lot of information about it. So, uh, initialize. Ooh, okay, hang on. Yes, yeah, so we will return the overlays. Um, and then.
Well, actually, we're going to pass them in as a delete overlays field. And when we get that, we know which overlays we're going to delete um, or remove, actually, before we add the new ones. So that's sort of the way we keep track of things. We return the ones we added, and then on the next call, we expect the caller to tell us to delete the ones we've, you know, we've added previously to get the new ones. So, so let's go ahead and do this. No, we don't need to do that because we're ob overlays equals blank object and a blank array. And you have to do that because otherwise you can't add stuff to it. And so now what we want to do here is, I don't know if this is going to work. I keep forgetting if this is correct syntax for uh, JavaScript. Um, list of overlays, we add the overlay. And now here we actually do have to return the object because we expect the person who uh, called this function to send us back the, uh, the things they want deleted later on. So let's see if this is broken stuff. It probably has, actually. Um, no, it has not. OK, cool. Now there are no overlays. So that, that's kind of nice. It's not really nice. It's, it's terrible, but let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and run it in here and see what the console complains about. Expected expression got, and I think that is exactly the uh, thing I'm trying to cheat with here. Object overlays equals. Um, so let me see, what can we do with an array? Oh, well. And I might have to actually look up the syntax here. We could even use a counting variable and then just assign it 0, 1, 2. Um, but let's see what this does. OK, didn't break anything. Oh, I need to reload this, actually. Well, this isn't quite as good as I hoped. Wow. That is. Not great. So I've actually managed to do more terrible things to it this way. Um, let's see, and I think the problem here is I'm I, I'm using I'm doing this is not how you do add stuff to an array. Um, so let's go ahead and reload here and see if we can bring it back to its previous badness. Good. So now it's back to its previous badness. Uh, and here I think I was actually trying to add the overlay to the map, and overlay itself isn't a map. So let's see, uh, overlays equal to that, and we want to, oh, I shouldn't have to do this. JavaScript add element to array. The push method, yeah, the push is probably the way I would have done it if I hadn't even thought of it. So really what I thought of first would have been the correct way to do it. Push, push, and unshifted, those are both Perl actually, and those also occur in Perl. So let's go ahead and just uh, push the, these overlays onto the end of the, uh, uh, let's see. So object overlays. Now we could actually add it to the delete list. We don't really want it. That's kind of ugly. So object overlays, push overlay. I'm hoping this will be interpreted as um, array push, not overlays.push. But if it isn't, we should get a syntax error out of that. OK, fantastic. We do this. Everything looks good, except, of course, it's terrible. OK. And then return object. So what we can do here, and we could do this later also. Let's log to see what our list of overlays looks like. Before, and you know, we're going to return it, so it's not a huge deal. But let's go ahead and do that. Run. Console nothing. Do this. Console something about to return. OK, and that we probably need to get rid of. That is the. Uh, debugging statement that shows you what PNG images were returning, but they are way, way too big. Uh, they're way too long, and the debugging information is not useful. So we will comment out this line that does that. Uh, run it again. Uh, move here. OK. Oh, wow. So this is actually returning. Actually, I don't know where this is being logged at, but this might be the... Well, no, because this isn't the object overlay. I'll have to find where I'm doing that. Um, but here's the... Uh, you know what? This is going to be... Too, we need to actually fix this. I need to actually fix this. All right, so I need to see where I'm console logging here that is going horribly wrong. Okay, that was just that one. 
I, I actually think it's in BC Maps, or it's in the main code, the uh, console log. But let's just take a look. Oh. Okay, that's the transparent debugger. That We're not calling that, so we're fine. Um, at some point, maybe we could figure out how to trace inside of a JavaScript program. Um, hello, Adam is awesome. Uh, you are my only user except for the Lurks user. Uh, feel free to say hi or to just uh, lurk like Lurks, which is an artificial user. All right, so let's see if we can get find where that uh, console log is. And at some point we want to... Okay, object overlay. So that's the only thing I should be logging unless... No, that's... Well, you know what? Let's do this. This is horrible XML, but it will show us, we, we'll be able to get to where we want to be pretty quickly. Okay. Let's run. Move. And we really do need to call the function f one time beforehand, but for right now. Overlay. Now let's see if this is going to be, oh, here we are, overlays. Data. Oh, you know what? Because the overlay has a lot of crap in it. That's why. Um, so that is actually fine. Now I'm wondering if there's a way to just add sort of the object number or the ID of the overlay. Um, and let's see... And I'm not even sure that's going to be a good idea. I don't know if you can. I don't know if that's going to run. First, second of all, I don't know if you can access JavaScript items by their ID. Don't, it doesn't like that. Um, let's take a brief second to see if we can. Uh, if we can, JavaScript um, objects can be, uh, you know, we can handle them by reference instead of having to. But uh, they might be anyway. But let's see if we can um, reference to object. And let's see if we can do that. It might not be, um, there are no pointers work differently from, uh, just not, um, yeah, screw it. Plus, again, I keep forgetting that every time I do that, I don't open a new window. Uh, so it gets ugly. Okay, so we're just going to add, I think, actually, when what we're doing is adding a reference. It just looks really ugly. Um, let's go back over here. Um, okay, so this one we're going to be working a little bit blind, so we return the object, get back over into index.html where we actually call the uh, fake slippy... Nope, we don't do that there. Actually, we better do that there. So that's two tile layers, that's the second tile layer is the the artificial thing that I created in Perl. And where is my third update view? Oh. Okay. I mean, that does make sense. We have to call it every time. But this makes things a little bit ugl uglier. Um. Yeah, this does not solve the problem I wanted to solve, which was having a, um, a consistent name for uh, this, the object that represents uh, what's on the map. So let's see if we can do this. Um, huh. Well, I hate repeating code, but it's actually going to be a lot easier if we call it once before we call update view. Um, so if we call it once, sort of, let's see, let t1, let t2. Um, we'll call it FTOM for fake tiles on map. So we do that, place fake tiles on map, so that gives us back the object. Uh, it is not actually a tile layer, I don't think, because um, we might be able to find a way to kludge it up so it is a tile layer. Um, hmm. 
That's an interesting question. Can a um, can a JavaScript URL call uh, a method in JavaScript? Uh, if so, we can make uh, place fake tiles dot 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 a um, a U a uh, tile map. And that would be actually interesting to see if we could do that. Of course, we can make it what I've done with this one right here. It is a, it is a tile map, but it's remote, so it's not being called locally. And it would be somewhat curious to see if you could um, you could call it uh, locally uh, with, for example, huh? I bet you could actually. Uh, you would just make one of these other files here be the um, be the thing that you're calling. Um, no, you might need more than that. You might actually need some sort of uh, Node.js running or something, because this isn't a server. Um, interesting question, though, actually, whether that can be done. I mean, we're using uh, PNG files as, as URLs. Um, the next step would sort of be using, uh, using uh, templating and having it so that when you called a certain URL, it ran a function with those parameters, but the function was was local. And let me quickly look at the tile layer. I don't think it's going to work, but uh, tile layer. And we should, nope, didn't mean to do that. Let's do it over here. And let's see, um, yeah, so we'll look at this, this reference, and I'm pretty sure that you can't have a tile layer be like a, a function or something. Oh, there might be a clever way around that. Um, Okay, a string of the following format. Uh, custom keys. Huh. Should be evaluated from tile layer options like this. Um, okay. Simple templating facility. That's confusing. Um, oh, I see. So here, foo would become bar. I don't think that's going to help us create, um, call a function when we use the tile layer, uh, the tile layer call. We create a tile layer object. So, continuous world, zoom offset. Most of these are just going to be, oh, okay, unload. So I think the big problem here is um, the first parameter has to be a, an actual URL, a string of the following format, a, a URL template, but still uh, effectively a URL. And I don't think we can turn that into a, a function call. Um, Tyler WMS, again, I think the first argument still has to be a URL. I don't know if we could, we can fake it and make it into a, a call to a to a local, uh, to a local uh, function. So canvas. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, this is what we needed. Um. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save this version of it because I'm pretty excited now that I, I've been doing it wrong because we've been trying to use this, we've been trying to be clever here. Um, and what we really need to do is just use the tile layer canvas where we can uh, get a, a canvas layer and then um, just have the tile point zoom. Um, yeah, yeah, that's actually tile point. What is tile point? Is that X and Y? Um, well, we'll find out. All right, so let's go ahead and fix this up a little bit here. So now, really should be a way to actually co collapse all this crap that I don't use. Or not all of that crap, this crap, and not the whole body. But, well, I guess these are actually separate tags, so I can't really do that. Okay, so here we have um, la, 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 la. and here's where we set tile layer one. So what we want to do here, and because I'm, I'm so excited about this, we're going to make it uh, TL0, tile layer zero. 
and we're going to create a new um, just like this L tile la layer canvas. Okay, so I feel really bad. This is one reason uh, you should not be watching the stream is because I have no idea what I'm doing, um, and that could sort of leak over onto you. So this is a much better way of doing it. This is the way we should have done it to begin with. And now we want to know, let's see, we want to set draw tile to be a function, and the function I wanted to I wanted to be the fake slippy tile function, even though it takes the wrong arguments at this exact second. So we're going to do draw tile is the, the function name. So we're going to say tl zero. Yeah, that didn't work really well. Draw tile. I could just memorized it by now. Um, equal it is equal right? Damn. Equals fake. Create, make something. Throw me a frickin' bone here, JavaScript. Place. Uh, fake tiles on map. And I don't think I need to give the um, parameters because those will be... Really? It jumps back to there? So now... This won't wor work. I mean, if it does, I'll be very surprised. L tile layer canvas is not a function. No, it is not. Because I'm pretty sure you have to... Wait a minute. Really? Am I capitalizing it wrong? I thought I cut and pasted. Alright, let's just copy this. And I've got a sneaking suspicion the version of JavaScript we're using might not be good enough for this. So let's see what this does. Yep, L tile layer canvas is not a function. And let's see, we're going to Google this. And if I do this correctly, this should come up in a new ti in a new um Okay, so what why is this happening? Let's see. Okay, there's probably a replacement for it, which is um, is what we're looking for here. L tile layer canvas and then L canvas. So I let's see what's going on here. Okay, da -da -da, the description of the problem. Okay, it appears that it might have been replaced by L canvas. Just a simple instead of canvas tile there but let's let's see what's going on there okay allows vector layer to be displayed with canvas inherits renderer canvas is not available in all web browsers notably Internet Explorer 8 so so for if we really want to be compatible with all browsers, apparently we have to use my hack, which is create a PNG image and uh, and uh, put it place it on the map directly instead of using a tile layer. But let's take a look at this real quick. Um, renderer, so we can set the render to be L canvas instead of whatever it would be otherwise. Um, And so basically what we have to do is, and this looks ugly. It's probably doable, but it looks ugly. So apparently, uh, let's, I'm going to take a little bit more time, see if we can find a replacement for it. Um, 
and I think we can quote this because it is actually a, a fixed error message. Wow. Issue 1237, here it is. Um, so this is what Y L Y K K and Y L Tyler. So he's basically suggested we use L Canvas instead, but this might not be as easy as it looks. Um, and apparently it's an unsettled issue. Wow. Something that's actually useful um, is is not solved. Okay, bounty source. Um, not a... F there we go. Let's see what this does. This might just be a copy of the other thing we had. Now this looks an exact copy of what they had. All right, let's look at another quick look at L Canvas here, and it is okay. Good. So this is um, we're still in Leaflet. Capital L is Leaflet. Um, browser side. So this is the, the the big deal here is of course this is all browser side. Um, Okay. Let's look at some sample code, which they probably don't have any of. This is a, 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 um, a gist, which might actually be really helpful. Okay. Full view, straight, full screen overlay. Mm. Okay, this might actually be doable. Oh, let's see. Canvas overlay. Oh. Okay, so canvas overlay is not the same thing as canvas. Jesus Christ. Um, all right, so L canvas overlay might be what we need, assuming this actually supports that. So let's do this, and let's make this L... Canvas overlay seems a little bit friendlier than what we were using, assuming it's supported. Okay, let's take a quick look here to make sure I'm understanding this. So that code should work by itself. And I think I'm just making an exact copy of what I had. didn't like it. So apparently this is something you can add to, to JavaScript, but um, leaflet canvas overlay. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Let's see if there's anything else they have here. Image overlay. That's what we're using. We're using image. We're overlaying images instead of um, instead of just painting on the canvas directly. Um, and that works, but it's it's ugly. Uh, but actually, it might not be as ugly as we think it is. Um, polyline, so let's see. Okay. Okay, so we could put stuff on the map by that way. We don't really want to do that. That's really ugly. Okay, so uh, we just wasted some time, but we learned something, which is um, the, these two really, really useful functions don't exist in this version of JavaScript. Um, we might actually be able to add them using a script source and using some minimization techniques and so forth, 
Uh, but let's not do that. It's because we already have a working solution, kind of. Um, and let's see what this, uh, let FTOM equals paste fake tiles on map. Um, and then over here, and again, I don't like using global variables here, but um, FTOM equals, and here's where it gets kind of funky, our deletes will be the tiles that FTOM uh, the layers or whatever, the whatever it returned last time. Let me again have no sense of memory whatsoever. And we want delete overlays. Okay, so those are the ones we need to delete. And then really it could just have a notepad open somewhere for all this crap. But anyway, um, Delete overlays is what we want to delete, and what we return is uh, overlay z. Okay, so overlays is the array, delete overlays is the thing it needs to be sent in. So, and that's going to be delete the ones. No, we don't, it's not a function, it's a, it's a property. Okay. So I'll be surprised if this works, but... Okay. Please fake tiles on. Do I have a... Do I need a let? No, that is a let. Okay. 77... 17 in BC lib staging. Uh, BC maps 39.17. See what that is. Line 39. Um, okay. Create fake slippy tile. That's where we get the call. 7717 BC lib staging, which does not, we're not really using that, so I don't know what's going on there unless we've redefined a function. Yeah, that does not look like there's anything wrong there. Okay, um, but let's see if we can, well, let's remove this line and um, let's see what happens. Nope, doesn't like it. Okay, we know it works like this. Let's see if that. Nope, and I think the problem, of course, is now going to be over here where I say uh, try to define it ahead of time. And that might be, again, the thing where you can't actually even define it before you. Um... So I think this is going to be the problem here. So this is the line that's probably going to. Yeah. Okay. And we decided the reason for this was because it was happening too early. Um, oh, right, right. That's why we have to call update view and not... Um, we have to call update view and not uh, and not define it before that. That's actually what, what happened. So that's why we can't do that. Um, so what we can do, though, is right over here, um, call update view once. So this actually w will help in the sense that uh, if it works, yeah, or am I using it? Huh? huh? Oh, let's go over here. Okay. These fake tiles on map. Da -da -da. Can I not call update view even over here? Wow. So 
at this point you would think that everything would be well there might be a need to actually do something um like wait for the sync of the files or something like that so still really ugly that means that technically i could in theory update the view so quickly that uh, it won't work because something has been broken but okay so i want to see something here real quick right so if nothing's happened it, there are no the overlays don't happen touch it overlays happen we need to fix that uh... but it's not critical right now um... so what is going to be critical here is Ah, uh, painful. Place fake tiles on map map opacity three. Um, yeah, this is ugly. We I have done this before. Oh right, the way I did before though, I just removed all the layers, which is ugly. Um. Now, one thing we can do here, uh, and that this removing layers doesn't work because, of course, that uh, that removes the OSM tiles as well, and they don't come back, unfortunately. Um, so, one thing we could do here, which is really ugly, but um, please fake tiles on the map. Okay, it's going back over here to this. When we create these uh, overlays, we can add like a a dummy variable called tag, and we'll say the tag here is ftom. And now I'll leave that. That doesn't do anything, but I'll leave it like that. Actually, I'd better n not because that's going to become very large very very quickly. Okay. And that should still work the way it did before. Not a problem. Beautiful. Right, because I'm moving all of them. But, back in index.html here, we can make it a conditional now. Uh, if layer uh, dot tag equal 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 f to m, then layer remove. Um, otherwise, keep that layer going. Again, this is very ugly. Um, for one thing, we're going through layers unnecessarily. Missing what? That's probably in um, BC Maps. Um, oh, do I need another? No. After argument list. Um, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I want. I want it to be inside of this. The opacity is this. The tag is F Tom. And now let's see if that breaks. It will. Yep. Balance, balance, balanced. Let's go back to index.html. Oh. Right, because we're doing inline function, we need a parenthesis there. Okay, it didn't break. That's kind of awesome. Um, not really deleting anything here. So let's see. Let's make sure I'm doing this correctly. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding an uh, L image overlay, and the image overlay has a bunch of stuff on it. And one of the things ha it has on it is a tag called ftom. Over here, I'm saying if the layer tag is ftom, remove the layer. 
and it appears though for whatever reason the layers uh, tag does not seem to be um, be preserved so let's debug that real quick okay so over here we let's just we can actually say um, uh, okay I don't really want to do this too many times but uh, uh, let's just do this and the thing we're looking for now is if the overlay takes the tag that I gave it and um, hopefully preserve it should preserve it there's no reason it shouldn't okay do this move console log uh, look for the overlay tag in the uh, output actually here it is overlay URL equals blah 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 it's gonna be a real pain in the ass looking for the tag tag but let's see if we can do this options oh okay wait yes so it's actually gonna be options dot tag not can I let's see overlay equals that's right because when I create an overlay I cannot give it arbitrary tags to the overlay itself but I can to the options and so that's what I meant to do over here and now let's watch this fail whoa I mean yeah I expected this and we're doing a hideous amount of unnecessary logging. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, we will try to do something better here than what I'm doing, uh, which because we still have to go through all the layers uh, before we can remove uh, this one, which is not that ugly because there aren't that many of them, but it would be nice if we could um, go the other way and have them indexed so that we know which ones to delete, like have a, a deletes array that gets read every time um, then that isn't global which unfortunately might not be possible all right let's take a look at this from let's do, do I want? result this one does open on a new page do this move around here move around here move back gorgeous it's being redrawn every time which is still not necessarily a great thing to be doing um, but it's acceptable for what we're doing right now. Okay, fantastic. Do you know that Asuna intersects I-40 at uh, roughly this latitude? I don't don't care. It's a nice street. Um, so now we have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this, unless I just did. Well, even, th even then. Um, so now we actually have the problem fixed, where there's uh, the the tiles keep adding up on top of each other. Um, it would be nice to have had the sort of the canvas tile function and in some sense place fake tiles on map uh, is a function like that because a lot of the stuff we do here is very generic and I just realized you guys can't see my mouse so I'll try to be a lot of the stuff we do here is very generic that we would do for any uh, sort of uh, over tile overlay um, and in fact we might be able to actually cr create a function that, let's see I'm going to be careful here um, and so in theory we could have, have a function that just takes uh, z, x, and y values and returns what you want to put on that well actually that's what we're doing here where the create flake slippy tile takes the x, y, and z values this is what does most of the work here um, so in fact Uh, if we wanted to do so, so the, really the only reason this thing is called place fake tiles on map is because of this one function here, create fake slippy tile. So we can sort of obviously see uh, that we can generalize this function by providing create fake slippy tile as an argument to the function. Because everything else is going to be the same. The only thing that changes is the name of the function uh, that, uh, that determines what the tiles are going to be that prints out the PNG image as a, as a URL uh, and that is sort of hideously ugly uh, but, uh, but that could be done so let's see if we can do that I did save this so we don't have to um, let's see so let's 
We're going to actually overlay... Um, you know, we could still call them fake slippy tiles, because that they still are fake slippy tiles. They're just not text fake slippy tiles. So opacity, delete the overlays. We're gonna not we're not using that. Not crazy about that, but okay. No return values. And um tile func. The function that returns a URL of a well, it's a ping image URL of what to put on a given tile. Okay. So now, um, let's add map. Um, yeah, I think actually this is the only thing that we need to change here. Um, and just to make make us a little bit happier, we're going to keep this like this, and then we're going to say oh, come on, I won't even I don't know if that's going to work, but it should, maybe I'm just not going to say that object tile func, and just call that, so this is going to be actually any map uh, where, uh, as long as we have a function that knows how to draw itself so going back over here into the main program. Uh, when we call it uh, place fake tiles on map, all we have to do here is say the tile func is place, no, create fake slippy tile. This won't work. I'm like a 99% sure this won't work. Wow. I'm, I'm amazed. Okay. That's actually pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I said fucking. Fuck you. I'm going to download that even though there's only one change because I really like the fact that this works this well. Okay, fantastic. So now we can do something else that, um, that I've actually already done in a function called buffer that I think will be in staging, but it might be in the actual library. Here it is. Um... Now, in in GIS terms, what a buffer is, is it's a uh, set of points that is within a given distance or is exactly a given distance from another point. So if you wanted to know, for example, all of the points that were 15 miles from the center of Albuquerque, uh, that would be a buffer. And in this case, um, what we're doing here, so what we're going to do is this lets you place a buffer around something, but I get the feeling... Um, that we can actually just create a function that does this that's a little bit even easier than this function. Because uh, this function actually does do, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this function it just does a little bit more work than it needs to. Um, so let's go ahead and write a function that um, hmm. this will be interesting. Um, yeah, the problem here might be that we I think we can fix this. The problem here is we might need to pass extra parameters to the function. In this case, we just want it done one way. So we don't have to pass any extra parameters to create slippy tile. Uh, create f whatever it was, fake slippy tile or whatever. Um, so we just call tile func um, with these parameters. And in this case, the... Uh, and in this case, there are no extra parameters to be passed. So... Uh, so that's quite... So place fake tiles on map, tile func is this. We do need a way to be able to pass extra parameters uh, to, the, to the tile function, even if the tile function is not going to use them. Um, because if it does, we need to be able to do that. So map, opacity, tile func, extra params. Um, 
extra parameters to pass to the tile funk. Okay. And we can do that. Let's see here, we're calling actually I think we can do that without too much trouble here. Tile funk, and then we can just say the extra params are object extra params. And then over here, for this one we don't need any extra parameters, but let's let's pass them anyway. Just to see if it works. Um, create flippy, fake flippy tile, extra params, um, right, so the extra params is going to have to be in other objects, we don't actually know, actually, in theory, we could pass the object itself onto the uh, the tile function. I don't know if I want to do that, but if we did, we could just put in anything we wanted here, um, and the uh, the end would would get that. Um, I don't think we should do that because the, if we have x, y, and z values in this object that we're passing, they'll get confused with the x, y, and z values that were being uh, that are being called the that the create fake slippy tile or whatever the tile funk is needs. So the create ti uh, uh, the tile function needs x, y, and z always, um, but we can send it some extra parameters. So let's say, um, not very creative here, and this is not my real age, so I'm much older than that. Um, all right, so now this shouldn't break anything. Good. Um, and now we should be seeing if um, and so what we can do here is just see if the object gets those parameters. It's not going to use them, but um, let me use my little XML -y thing, which could be wrapped in a function. Um, And if it does, we know that if it needed to, it could use these extra parameters. Let's see what's going on here. Do this, do that. There it is. Beautiful. Uh, the extra parameters are uh, the, well, you know what? Let's go one step further. Extra parameters dot name. Let's see if it can, it really is an object. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Love it. Um, and of course, create fake slippy tile doesn't need that. Although, at some point, we might use uh, the fake param the parameters to determine exactly what information to show here. Uh, there's other stuff we could be putting here, like for example, the height of the slippy tile, the width of each north and south edge of the slippy tile, which are not, by the way, going to be identical as this is a Mercator map, um, and other stuff like that. We could put in all sorts of other uh, stuff in the text. And we could use extra params to determine what that extra stuff is. Okay. So, let's see how long I've been going here. Um, according to OBS, I've been streaming for about an hour. Um, yeah, let's push it a little bit here and write a new function. And this function is going to be... Um, the buffer function, and let me copy. Let me actually um, let me actually take the buffer function from here, and we'll copy it, and we'll we'll get rid of some of the stuff we don't need from it. Uh, so we're just going to copy it, and then we're going to explain it, and we're going to trim it down to be uh, what it actually should be, which is um, actually quite a bit simpler. Again, I'm going to be this time. Be careful. You can't use the same name for the function, so we're going to call this buffer tile. Okay, let me rename the function first. Okay, so what this is going to do is um, 
return ping image uh, displaying a buffer around a given point. So we will not need the because now this thing is now we're just actually going to be getting x y z. I probably shouldn't be doing this. The x y and z parameters of the tab of the um, tile rather. Um, we do need the longitude and the longitude and the latitude of the target point, but because we're receiving these extra parameters, x, y, and z are the normal ones. So this is going to be um, I should make this x, y, and z so it's a bit at least uniform, if not correct. Uh, extra params dot lat the uh, the longitude and latitude of the target function allow multiple buffers. That's still good to do. Extra params color function now. We're actually not going to draw a single buffer, but we're going to draw multiple buffers. Where we're basically going to say, if we know the distance from the point is something, color function will tell us what color to paint that point. Uh, so we can actually have, like, we could just have a very simple color function that says, if the distance is less than 10, paint it red. If it's greater than 10, uh, paint it white. Um, or trans we can actually make it a transparent color because colors can be uh, transparent but by having a no um no opacity uh let's see min zoom and max zoom are gonna would be um i don't think we need those we're gonna assume a mercator projection we don't need to to do this um opacity let's see yeah I th let's see do we need that for the other one or did we determine opacity later on um No, opacity would be passed to the uh, the fake tiles, not to this one. So the uh, the calling program can determine um, whether or not how opaque the map is. So all our job is is to just basically paint the, the tile. Um, we are going to get rid of this. Now this is a clever little function that tells you which tiles we would need. Uh, actually, this doesn't work here because here we're just going to get x, y, and z. We already know what the uh, we already know what the uh, the tile. We're only doing one tile here. So that doesn't mean we don't need that. Don't need. Let's see. Do we want need the bounds here? Yeah, we we do need the bounds, but it's actually not that going to be that hard to get that. Because um, we're getting x, y, and z. Now let me see if over here. Um, so this is the x, y, and z tiles. <laughs> I'm wondering if we can just send in like uh, north latitude and east latitude and all that good stuff right in there because we know them. Um, and then let the program sort of uh, um, let the code make it easier for the code since we've already computed all that stuff. So there's a slight problem here which is um, when we do tile to lat long lat, um, let's see. Because it's not, the latitude distances are Mercator, and as always, that creates a problem for us because that's not equally spaced. So, um, yeah, I don't think that's going to matter. Let's see. And yeah, I think we can pass this in actually. Um, so we can compute this before we've set the URL. And then we might as well just pass it in as a to help out. We're still going to have a problem here, but it's going to be a different problem. Okay. Um, let's see. Of the tile. Latitude, longitude, which is sort of apparent from the name, but we're going to say it anyway. 
And then what we're going to do here, um, since we already have the bounds, now this is this is the sort of important function. We need to know this tile will have 65,536 pixels. 256 running in the x direction times 256 running in the y direction. We're actually going to compute the distance for each of those pixels from the given uh, center point latitude and longitude, which probably should have been set as one thing, but that's fine. And so um, the grid to distances function would do that for us, uh, but just to make life easier, just to make life more difficult or easier or whatever, uh, let's let's go ahead and write this out a little bit. So we're going to say for let i equals zero. You know what? Let's be careful here. I want to not mix up my variables. Yeah, we're going to say i and j instead of x and y because we're using object dot x and object dot y to mean the x y z coordinates of this tile. Um, hopefully, I'm doing this right. And now, one thing you might be wondering about, and I wondered about, is is it really effective to calculate 65,536 distances um, every time a, one single tile is drawn? Because you might be ending up doing like about a million calculations here. Uh, it turns out JavaScript handles this really well. At least when I tested it, it did. might not do that today for me. OK. So the first thing we need to know is where we are in the tile. We know what the corner information is. Um, and we know what the x, y, and z of the tile is. And actually, I think, I'm going to look at grid to distances, but I think uh, we can actually just use tile to long lat. In fact, I think we can do that. I'm so confident we can do that. Um, now here we're going to be careful. Um, we're going from 0 to 255, but we want the theoretical uh, latitude and longitude um, of the center of this point. So that's actually i plus 0. Point, um, OK, sorry. It's going to be x plus i plus 0. 0.5 over 256. So this is going to go from um, x which is the, uh, the and that's actually, sorry, object x. So the tile number is going to increase from x to x plus 1, but not quite, because we actually want the middle of the pixel, uh, which is going to be um, this thing. y is going to be object y plus j plus, and I should call that 1 half, actually. So, um, right, so th these are going to be the, each pixel on the tile is going to have these values uh, because we're, we allow for fractional tiles in tiles on lon lat. And the z value is just going to be the z value, the object z value. Um, so this is going to be really ugly, but this actually is going to be very seriously ugly. Um, we might, might actually want to cut it off at a certain point. Um, of course, what we want here is that long lat equal that, console log long lat. Um, and this will tell us the longitude and latitude of a given pixel on the, uh, on the tile, uh, which is a finer granularity, granularity than the tile itself. By the way, if you're clever, you've probably noticed that if you go in eight zoom levels deeper, each thing that's a pixel here now will be a full tile uh, eight levels deeper because of the way zooming works. Um, but that, and you you actually could probably use that uh, by doing like z plus eight here and x times eight plus whatever. I'm not going to do it, but I'm just pointing out that yes, it, it really is. Each pixel will eventually become a tile, and of course, that goes on in theory as long as you want to keep zooming in. I think we can set a zoom limit because at some point open street maps won't return tiles either. Um, so let's see. I sort of want to test this without having to necessarily um, 
without necessarily having to um, so let's do this without having to necessarily create a whole map out of it. So let's say buffer tile, and let's just use the simple possible one, the possible. Um, yeah, let's see what that does. Probably do horrible things, but whatever. Now, why does this thing not do syntax highlighting? Well, because it hates me. Um, and the beautiful thing is it doesn't tell you where this is, although since we just wrote this function, um, it's, uh, it's probably somewhere in this function. And we actually don't need this anymore because we're actually replacing this with our own code. We don't need this. And we don't need I think that is correct. I wonder if this thing does have syntax formatting and I'm just not aware of it. Running. It's not good. Um stop it. We're gonna stop this. So something terrible has happened. And this should only be, this is a big loop, but it's not so big that this should, I've broken it, so I'm going to reload. Okay. Oh, wow. So yes, apparently printing out 65,000 values, even though it can handle it, it, it's ugly. So let me, let me fix that really quickly here. Um... Uh, this is, we're just going to only log like a, uh, 650 of them, about a hundredth of them. Uh, this is going to be ugly because we're not going to actually know what the i, j, and k values are. But this is, this will be somewhat helpful, I think. Um, so projection zero, oh, projection has to be one, doesn't it? Um, so we want a Mercator projection. And let's see, X, Y, and Z are going to be, oh yeah, actually, um, yeah, okay. So the X value is, this is, this is near the end, obviously, uh, Y is 0 0.87, and we get, why does Y become this number? Um, that's some really weird looking formatting that still shouldn't affect uh, uh, object y plus, which is 0, plus j plus 1 half, so the last value 255 over 256, and yet it doesn't look like that's what this is. Um, And and am I actually maybe tiled along that is not the correct thing to use here? I actually might just want point to to long lat because um, this does it for the whole tile, um, which might be incorrect. Okay, I'm getting confused more so than I am in general, and uh, so I'm gonna call it, call it for the stream now, but. Um, We'll pick this up later, probably not today, maybe tomorrow. Maybe not. Who cares? Who knows? Goodbye for now.